Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Economic Development Committee meeting for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Thank you for your patience as we iron out some tech issues. Um, Amy, please call the roll. Chair LaPlante. Here. Vice Chair Glossy. Here. Member Rutledge. Here. Member Covert. Here. Member Childress. Yes. And Member You. Here. Wonderful. Thank you. I move to approve the minutes from our last Economic Development mm -hmm. Committee meeting on March 19th, 2024. Second. We have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. And remember, we wait until the everything is read before we second and move in this committee. Um, for chairwoman remarks, welcome everyone. We're so happy that you're here. This is an exciting meeting that we have been waiting for for um, several months to hear some of the results of two feasibility studies that we have been, we have tasked Choose DuPage, one of our trusted community partners, to implement. This was done when we had a unanimous bipartisan vote on the whole committee, uh, excuse me, on the whole board to um, fund a two different feasibility studies, one for the arts and one for sports in DuPage County. So today, what we have a lot of dense information to get through in a short amount of time. So we're going to try to be as efficient and effective as possible. So we do have an action item for the committee to take. We do need to reach consensus on moving forward. Um, for both of these studies. So to that end, I'm going to make sure and call on and hear from the members of our committee who have to vote first, and then I can open it up to people who are not on the committee or anyone else who would like to ask questions or have comments. Um, we will be adhering to Robert's Rules of Order. So just if you have something that you would like to say, you raise your hand and you wait to be recognized, and then we would love to hear from you. Um, I'm very, very proud of all the work that we've done with Choose DuPage and our two consultants who are joining us, um, one from New York and one from a little bit more local, <laughs> but um, we're really happy to welcome them here to DuPage County. There's been an awful lot of effort um, put into this study, and I'm excited, just like I'm sure everyone else is, to hear the results. Um, we have a couple orders of business, then I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Do we have any public comment? We do not. Thank you. Okay. Um, an informational uh, 24 item 6A 241278 GPN 1224 Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Workforce Services Grant for low moderate income individuals, including immigrants, migrants, and refugees for $177,099.32 through Human Resources Workforce Development Division. We have a motion and a second. Um, we have a motion. Well, I made the motion, yes, and then Sheila, Member Rutledge uh, seconded it. Okay, um, we don't need a vote, do we just need to, just placing, that's just for informational, correct? Yes. Okay, no. wonderful. So, moving on to budget transfers, item 7A, 24-1265, transfer of funds from 502840-53400-dash, okay. here is a lot of numbers, 000, zero, zero <laughs> rental of office space, to another long number, 5,028.40, lease of buildings in the amount of $315,078 to cover monthly rent expense for workforce development division. Transfers total budget from one account to the other in accordance with the new county adopted lease policy. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second, um, and we need a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Thank you so much. And now here we are to our presentation. May I introduce Greg Bedeloff of Choose DuPage. He's going to introduce our presenters and um, take it away, Greg. Thank, thank you very you. much, Chair LaPlante, and thank you to the members of the Economic Development Committee. As Chair LaPlante pointed out, Choose DuPage was pleased and honored to lead and administer the feasibility studies on behalf of the county for the performing arts and sports. Uh, it was a very informative and enlightening Endeavor for Choose DuPage, and we're pleased to present you with the results to date on both the performing arts and the feasibility study. I know that you have a very busy meeting today and with two presentations. Again, I'll just keep my remarks brief and introduce Duncan Webb from Web Management Services from New York, who led the feasibility study for the performing arts. Thank you, Thank you Duncan. Okay. Uh, thank you, Greg, Third Plant, members of the committee. Thank you for inviting me to chair the preliminary results of the first half of our study with you today. Yeah. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, this is a study that came after some work that you started doing in your community a few years ago, forming an ad hoc committee. You 
hosted some events and started thinking about best things in the arts. Asked Greg and choose LePage to lead the study effort published a competitive RFP. We were successful in being selected to do the arts feasibility study and support this. Next, please. Oh, so we have two other plan or two other firms with us, White and Co., who you know they've done from our work in DuPage and Schuler Shook um, that are not yet working with us. It depends on getting to this next round of work. So I am a management consultant to people who build and operate theaters. I've been doing this for 35 years, roaming around the country, working for cities and schools and arts organizations and developers. I started this practice 27 years ago. We just started project 513. And fun fact, uh, we did almost the same study for DuPage County uh, 24 years ago. So we're back uh, doing it again and, and pleased to have the opportunity. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, so I, as I said, this is the first half of the study and the first half is all, always trying to say, what, if anything, do you need? And we always address that by focusing on forage. One, is there an audience for arts facilities? And who are, lives here, works here, visits here? What do they like? What do they want? And is there propensity and capacity in the market to, to attend? Secondly, what's the level and nature of demand on the part of users, groups who might be on a stage or rehearsing or practicing? Uh, and what do they need and want? Third, what are the existing facilities that serve the market? And what are the gaps in that inventory that we might fill with this project? Then the fourth one is always the most interesting and tricky one, which is where is the county going and what kinds of arts facilities help you get there? So what's the project that responds to your broader goals for DuPage County? Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, a great process. We had a good set of confidential interviews, um, uh, users, artists, arts organizations, community leaders, to give us a sense of those sort of demand and supply issues and understanding more about county, uh, uh, things that are important to the county. Uh, good research on the arts market. We purchased data and sort of did a lot of analysis of it. Um, we've reviewed broader forces and trends. Probably the most detail-oriented work was a significant inventories of all the performing arts venues, uh, indoor and outdoor, and active arts facilities, places where people teach and learn various types of arts disciplines. Uh, and then looking at various uh, comparable projects around the country that might inform our recommendations. Next slide, please. So just to say something about forces and trends, there's a, there's a lot of analysis there, but, but here's, here's the, where, how we think about how the art sector is responding to change in our world. First of all, very importantly, we have embraced a much broader definition of cultural identity, <coughs> uh, how people express their cultural heritage and their creativity. It's important to be broad and inclusive on in our approach to that. My favorite soundbite is I say we've gone from Friday night lights to community <laughs> So we used to think of a theater as a, as a lovely building where the marquee lights up on a Friday night and fancy people wearing their fancy clothes arrive for a fancy performance. And today, our image of a, of a performing arts venue is very different. It's all about being a 24-7 building that's open, active, inclusive. There are things going on there from 7 o'clock in the morning until midnight because we want it to be the community living room, a place where everyone feels welcome, uh, and is actively coming together as a community. Um, it's very important given changes in the world that we partner with the educators for programs and their delivery. We've moved uh, away from arts palaces to arts districts. Back in the 60s and the 70s, we tore down neighborhoods to build big sort of iconic structures for the arts. Today, we're much more interested in arts districts, building multiple facilities within an area that creates sort of vibrancy, that reuses existing buildings, that is porous enough to support commercial development and, and provides a much greater impact on the community. We support active as well as passive participation in the arts. We do what we can to enhance the social experience around participating in the arts. Uh, in order to serve the arts community, we have to work very hard to maintain a low cost of access for arts facilities for artists and arts organizations. And most importantly, buildings have to look outward and think about what they can do to address economic and community development issues. Next slide, please. So just a few comments on the market. 
uh, DuPage County itself population is stable at over 900,000 now. Next slide. Um, demographically, it is a relatively affluent county. Many folks with household income greater than 150,000, not many uh, below the, the poverty line. Next slide. Um, uh, most important demographic uh, issue for us is level of educational attainment. That is the key predictor of arts participation. And in this case, DuPage County has high levels of folks with uh, graduate degrees, as well as bachelor's degrees, which suggests high levels of participation. Next slide. Yes, Lynn. Can you please, just, just so everyone's clear, the um, can you de delineate between the DuPage County graph, oh, yeah, the I'm colors, sorry. and right. the, the nation? So DuPage nation. County, yeah, those that's the that's lighter the USA the green, and the blue is the USA. Yeah, for all of these slides. So if you can see, DuPage County is exceeding a lot of the metrics that are uh, for for the for the country. Right. So uh, an age distribution not dissimilar from the rest of the country. Uh, lots of kids, lots of seniors, but within the middle, there's probably more <coughs> folks in those higher age brackets. Next slide. Uh, some diversity in the county, a significant Asian population, uh, but also Hispanic. Uh, and Black African American population as well. Next slide. Um, there's another uh, tool, uh, it's a geographic, geodemographic modeling tool called the Tapestry, which breaks the world down into these 72 clusters with silly names, but it, it gives us a sense of what people are like more than their demographics. So this is the profile, the green, the light green shows the key uh, clusters in DuPage County. And for us, what matters is that those top five clusters, uh, we, we look at what's called the Arts and Entertainment Index in order to predict their likelihood to participate in various types of arts programs. And those top five segments, you can see there's a little box on the right there, the savvy suburbanites, et cetera, all have very high indexes of arts participation. Next slide. Uh, and then one more way to look at the market, this is called the Market Potential Index that looks at uh, how people in DuPage County are more or less likely than the average American to participate in, in arts programs. So the, the vertical blue bar is average participation. So in DuPage County, you're basically to the right, which means greater than average participation in everything. So the top ones are like went to live theater, attended a classical music concert, uh, you're under the national average on attending country music, but pretty much everything else is greater than average, right? Next slide. So uh, the next work, as I said before, was a lot of research uh, looking at all of the different kinds of facilities, performance, active arts, and large outdoor venues. We decided those were the three sets that we wanted to look closely at. Next slide, please. So this is a matrix of every performing arts venue in the county. And in our full presentation, there are, there are about 30 slides that sort of, and, and a big sort of PDF pack that details every bit of information you might want to know on all of these venues. But this matrix is a kind of a visual way to look at venues. So on the vertical axis is our, is our rating of the quality of the venue. We use eight different attributes from functionality to audience amenities on the horizontal axis is seating capacity. So what we see is a huge set of organizations. And when the dark orange is outdoor, the green is indoor, right? So many facilities at the smaller capacity ranges, but also a pretty good set of higher quality venues, <coughs> really up to about a uh, thousand seats there. Next slide, please. Um, this is a map that shows all of those venues uh, in the county. And we looked at some of that are around the border, the outside of the county, just because they were important and influential. Next slide. Uh, so this is an active arts facility. So this is every place where there's a dance class or a theater class or uh, painting and mm -hmm. all kinds of sort of visual and performing arts programs occurring. Again, many of them in the county, but our observation about these venues is that they're more sort of neighborhood and community oriented. They're sort of you know, the typical, um, you know, Miss Teresa's dance studio where kids in a neighborhood go to take uh, ballet classes. Um, but so many at that kind of grassroots community level. Next slide, please. And then um, this is looking at large outdoor venues. So there's some, there's a, there is a set of them again, that sort of capacity on the vertical axis, quality on the horizontal axis. 
So we are we are identifying a bit of a gap uh, for at, at higher quality at capacity levels that are really ten thousand, you know, really more than about three thousand. Next slide. Uh, and then this is a map that shows those outdoor venues, still a few uh, in and around the county, certainly some significant competitive uh, venues like Rubini that we need to pay attention to. Next slide, please. So uh, we did a survey we, of, of our arts organizations in and around DuPage County, asking them what they need and want, and, and particularly looking for the need for some performing arts venues on the part of music, dance, and theater groups. And some of them, there is a set of organizations, mostly music, that are tending to want sort of somewhat smaller facilities mm -hmm. uh, in the county. Um, it turns out that uh, there is, as we said before, there is a pretty significant set of smaller venues in the county already that does, and those venues do have some capacity to support that demand as it exists. Uh, and a couple of other facilities that are now sort of under discussion. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, we think responding to nonprofit demand, uh, we might want to do that a little bit, but we think a lot of that can be satisfied with some existing facilities. Um, there was a lot of people said, well, why don't we just build a, a big roadhouse and focus exclusively on touring arts and entertainment programs? Um, we're a bit concerned about that because of the ability of uh, Chicago-based venues and promoters, and the way that their contracts work, they can define an area of an exclusion, meaning you know you can't bring this act to this within 30 miles or 60 miles of this market for the next uh, six months or 12 months or whatever it is. So pretty tough to do. Really focus on foreign product in DuPage, but there does seem to be this idea of active arts programs um, at at kind of a higher level. Thinking about uh, uh, things that are sort of the step above the traditional grassroots programs to do things that with high level, maybe Chicago based art educators in DuPage County. Next slide. So the last issue was aligning with goals. So we uh, talked to county board members uh, and read sort of recent reports and looked at some of your goals for the future, including this idea of sports tourism, uh, expanding the arts, uh, and doing things that really drive sustained growth and income uh, uh, through sort of visitation to the county. We also noted your sort of priority around supporting mental and physical health of DuPage residents. And that's something that we think is see as something we can align with. Next. So on that basis, uh, we say DuPage County has a large population, uh, active probably uh, high propensity to participate in the arts um, and interest in these sort of active arts programs and less formal outdoor performances and events. Uh, there's a large set of facilities in the market, so we need to be very careful in terms of something and how we compete with all the other venues uh, for audiences as well for programs. But we do like this idea of active arts participation that would support current uh, and emerging goals of the county around economic and community development. Next slide. So we thought about six options. We considered uh, all six of these ideas. And then next slide, we eliminated three of them. Uh, and the large, the traditional large indoor regional performing arts facility, we uh, dismissed because we don't think there's enough sort of DuPage County based demand for capacities in excess of you know, 800, 1200, 1500 seats that would justify that, you know, that similar to what they have in Skokie, that's kind of the North Shore type model. Uh, we, we are dismissing the idea of larger indoor entertainment venues, uh, like in around the country now, there are some of these sort of five to 6,000 seat venues that are big, commercially oriented, touring, uh, commercial music, and maybe some sports in addition. Uh, we think that's a little bit risky given the presence of your proximity to Chicago and the ability of the larger players in that market to limit the product coming here. And third, you know, the third idea we looked at just because of this current sort of craze around what's happened in Las Vegas with the sphere to so this big destination level uh, 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 attraction uh, to do that would require huge amounts of capital and really commercial development partners to drive a project like that. 
So that leaves us with three uh, recommendations that we'd like to consider moving forward. Next slide, please. Uh, the first one is to uh, continue to invest in uh, outdoor venues. Uh, and, and here we're saying first, why don't, let's look first at the idea of existing outdoor performance venues where you can invest and improve those. And the one that exists that might be worth consideration is the fairgrounds because it does work as a venue now, uh, but it's in, it needs a lot of investment. Infrastructure, lighting, staging, amenities, and there is a long-term potential to become a regional destination for the arts, but we are we would encourage more of an incremental approach to that. So don't throw millions and millions of dollars in there and suddenly expect it to become something different, but build on the position that that venue has in the market or that you could do in a comparable sort of similar location to do up to these sort of 10,000 capacity uh, sort of festivals, events, rib fest and other kind of community programs and performances like that. So again, we're stressing an incremental approach to making improvements, ideally, sort of optimally working with existing venues first. Next slide. So the second recommendation is similar in that this, we're also recommending another type of outdoor venue here, but this is different. And the idea here is that we think that the, the county campus itself would benefit from having a place within the campus and around the campus to have uh, outdoor performances, events, festivals, and community gatherings. So unlike the last one where the your capacities are up around 10,000 people, this is more two to 3,000 people, you know, standing or sitting on a lawn. So this is a venue here, it's one of my favorites is in uh, Mississauga, suburban Toronto where I grew up. Um, it's called Celebration Square right outside of the of the city of Mississauga City Hall. Uh, it's There's a, not a lot of infrastructure. They built a stage and some sort of truss and good sort of power, but they use it for, you know, probably 20 concerts a year. It's a place where they, from which they run community rides and runs, and fireworks displays and other community celebrations. So some people have talked about that as sort of the front porch for the city of Mississauga, at least sort of the county, the community comes together for certain types of events. And the third recommendation uh, is to invest in uh, arts education facilities. So places where you bring people to uh, DuPage who, are, who can be partners in helping you teach various aspects of the performing arts. So you could do um, one or more of these venues. You could try and put a bunch of different programs in one building, or you could do multiple facilities with multiple <coughs> Uh, that's sort of an intriguing idea because you could uh, adaptively reuse existing structures to, in the short term to attract some of these education partners to DuPage County to develop these programs uh, for county residents. And that means talking to uh, Chicago groups like the Old Town School of Music, uh, the Music Institute. Uh, there's a group in DuPage now that's trying to advance the idea of a charter school of the Academy of the Arts. So it's working with partners either within DuPage or from larger Chicago land to get them to bring arts education programs to the county. And those spaces themselves would have some combination of uh, teaching, rehearsal, and support space. Uh, this image is of a really neat space in New York City. It is the home of the Orchestra of St. Luke's. Uh, it, and this is the main space there. It's essentially a rehearsal space for that orchestra, but it's busy from seven o'clock in the morning until midnight every day with youth orchestra programs and teaching programs and choral rehearsals and all kinds of programs that really drive active arts participation. So we're saying all three of those ideas make sense. Uh, it's not choose one, it's think about all of them. But at the same time, we're saying you don't need to do it all at once. This can be incremental. You can decide how to invest county resources to advance each uh, of these venues or ideas separately or collectively. Next. So uh, the unusual part of this work for us that you asked us to look at the fairground as a possible site for live arts and entertainment venues. And it was a little bit, typically we wouldn't do that until after we got through a presentation like today, <coughs> where we have a bit of a concept and we can start thinking about where they're located. But because it's an issue that sort of bubbled up in the county, 
uh, Greg and the team and, and, and Chair LaPlante asked us to think about the fairgrounds and whether they might be appropriate for any or all of these venues. In fact, two of the three could be on or near that, that sort of the, something in front of the county buildings and also investing in the current fairgrounds outdoor venues. Um, uh, generally, the fairgrounds is in a good sort of central location within the county, parking, uh, pretty good ingress and egress. There are some underused buildings on the site get, that could theoretically be adapted for arts education facilities. The noise issues are there, but potentially manageable. Uh, train tracks create noise, but there's an opportunity to have a train station uh, on or near that location. And clearly it's a, it's a large enough site to support these initial recommendations. So we don't have to go there, but you've asked us to think about the fairgrounds and to watch at least two of these venues if not three, could theoretically work at that location. Next slide, please. So the next steps for us is that if you allow us to continue our work, we are going to essentially flesh out these three ideas in terms of both the physical implications and the, and which means you know where where else might they be located, not just at the fairgrounds. Uh, what what is in each building? What does it cost to build them? Uh, and um, that sort of the implications of that physical investment. And while the uh, Schuler and Schuch and Wagen Company are doing that work, I'm gonna write a business plan that suggests how each of those three sets of venues would be programmed, operated, uh, and financially sustained. And with your blessing to do this, then we'll, we'll do this work for the next few months and, and come back to you with results, which also include uh, projecting the economic impact uh, recommended facilities on and for the I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Duncan. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate this. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would like to say is we'll, we'll have questions before we um, take a vote for consensus to move forward. Um, the first thing I did when I began chairing economic development was to say that our goal was to find new revenue streams, was to be creative, think outside the box, and to bring new sources of economic development and tourism to DuPage County. Um, this is what's going to drive the economy. This is what's going to mm -hmm. change the economic or cultural landscape. So this study is what that looks like. This is us going out there, seeing what's available, seeing what's possible, and really taking a very deep dive um, and an assessment of DuPage County. So I just want to say this is, this is that goal set in action. This is what it looks like. So I'm thrilled to see this in Technicolor and to have you walk us through it. And now I'll open it for questions. Member Childress. When I was looking at the study, it seems like all of the focus was on central, southern, and western DuPage. And my thought is, or the question I have is, what consideration did you have in the northern part of DuPage County, because it didn't seem like there was a lot of uh, thought process put into that. Right. Well, we we looked for facilities and programs throughout the county and where they are. In the next round of work, we'll think about locating facilities, and we will consider all areas of the county as a part of that. So, as I said before, the issue of the fairgrounds, I kind of forced us to look at the fairgrounds first, but now going into the second phase, we will consider all locations for facilities within the county. Thank you. Remember you. Yes, thank you, Jarek. Um, thanks so much for this presentation. Um, I noticed that there were 31 confidential interviews, but you guys also used user surveys. So I just wanted to know if there wasn't much data about how many user surveys and what the response rate was, um, any of that with regard to research methodology. Right. So um, uh, they weren't sort of they weren't confidential, the surveys themselves. Their groups named themselves because it was very much about, you know, who are you, what do you use, what do you need? Um, so I think we had, I think it was 21 completed surveys. We issued about 60 or so. Okay. Uh, we got middling response and it was mostly relatively small DuPage County-based performing arts organizations that needed some smaller performance in rooms. Um, and then uh, can we do one at a time and make sure everyone gets it? Uh, anyone on the committee? Yes. Um, I have a question and a comment. The third um, recommendation that you have for the mm -hmm. like the performing arts facilities, the indoor for 
um, like educational purposes. Do you envision those to have any kind of performance venue as well, or just the educational purpose? I'm so glad you asked that okay. because the, the, I forgot to mention at the end of that, that really the idea is that you get this kind of critical mass of arts education facilities will basically drive demand for a larger, better performance. Mm -hmm. So that would so be, be both. It would be the education and performance. Well, but the, the, I want to say that the thing of the performance venue in that case is very much a longer term thing rather than a short term thing because you need those arts education programs to come to grow and essentially to drive demand that makes a stronger case for the performance. Okay, so you do this first, and then that would be space two. Yeah. yeah. So my comment is I fully support this. I um, just, my own personal experience in DuPage County, um, little known fact, I actually started a theater company and we did a full um, Broadway performance of The Little Mermaid and finding a venue to have that performance was a very, very difficult process. So I can tell you that from an actual user, it is definitely needed. And, and the other side of that is I did this as like an educational um, benefit to my community and getting the the interest was was there. I mean, it was very easy to fill the class. It was very easy to fill the theater once we did the performances. We had four performances. They all sold out. So um, my personal experience is the demand is for sure there. And I fully believe that this fits within DuPage's strategic plan that we just finished. And so I'm a, I'm a huge proponent. And I'm glad that you brought this initiative forward. Thank you Chair. so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Member Rutledge. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to get my two cents that I, I've supported this all along. Um, I grew up in Aurora. They have the Paramount Arts Theater, which you had a slide of, River's Edge. I mean, and if a city, a municipality can make those kind of big dreams, I don't see the, uh, why that's, you know, why as a county we shouldn't do that as well. So that's all I've got to add. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Um, I agree. I, I really like the fact that we're talking about how we can really change the purpose or upgrade the purpose of the fairgrounds too. I mean, that's an asset we already have, and it probably will be more economical to start in that direction to, to get that to be a place where people want to go and where entertainment can happen. I will say at the city um, in Naperville, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of venues that do that, but we did have a proposal from a woman called Omnia. I don't know if you've looked at that. Um, Omnia was a proposal that was gonna be at Fifth Avenue train station, and it was a multi-million dollar project. The difficulty was they needed government to fund that. And then the funding moving forward wouldn't support the project. So that's always kind of a difficult um, pendulum, you know, because it's like, we want this, but is it going to be able to sustain itself? And I think that's one of the one of the things we want to be conscious of. There's also a, a, a piece, a parcel off of Ferry and 59, just east of Monarch Landing, that Calamos has had on the market forever. And that also was going to be, built, um, be purchased. They were looking for investors to purchase and make a um, music or art or theater, ice rink, concert center. They were looking for some investors to do that. And it has been a good 15 years that nothing has moved. Mm -hmm. So I, I really wanna make sure we we're all connected together as to when you do it, will they come? And when they come, will they pay? It's because you have to be able to retain it. Um, North Central College has a great um, a venue there and there's a lot of concerts there and you know I don't know so it's I'm so glad you're doing this because I think this opens up a lot of opportunities for the whole county in different in different places like where where you were talking about there's really currently nothing there to be able to offer people you know at least if we have something at the county in Wheaton okay it's not that far of a drive and you can go and see you know see a play or something along those lines so I think it's a great idea. Thank so, you. Great, great comment. And I just want to stress that you know the hard part of these projects is it's not so much the money to build, but it's often about the money to sustain. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why the work that we will hopefully do next of writing the business plan really addresses what this 
what the sustainability requirement is and where the funding might come from in order to support these facilities or whatnot. And you need that information in a credible, legitimate way in order to convince funders that these are good projects to invest. Thank you, Duncan. Any other questions, especially from committee members first or anyone else? Okay, I yes. There were two presentations, one for the arts and one for choose to page <clears throat> for the feasibility oh, study. No, for sports. sports. Sports, okay. Would this feasibility study cover sports and arts? No, that's coming next. Okay. Yeah, so this is, this is two different presentations today. So separate studies. Correct. Yeah, all under one umbrella. Yeah, meaning choose to page. Um, okay, so seeing no other questions, can we have a show of hands? Um, oh, yes, Chair Conroy, yes, please. Um, so I just want to add from my perspective, everything that we've gone through in terms of um, what the county is able to do. Um, I like the front porch idea because the front porch idea is something that can be incorporated into improving our fairgrounds both for our people who work here and for the community. Um, so I support that idea. I don't believe that we are financially in a position or should we be managing large facilities? That's not our mission as a county, but to enhance what we currently have. Like we have the Highland Games are coming here this, this summer. They were in Itasca, they've outgrown Itasca. So, you know, a, some sort of a small band shell type thing with like a, uh, a yoga walk type thing, enhancing what we currently have and inviting the arts to be part of that, I think is something that is in, in our best interest. Anything larger than that, that takes a lot of managing and um, financial investment is not something we can do as a county. Now, if there's somewhere else in the county that you can find that is suitable for something like that and you have somebody who's willing to pay for it that's that's a different situation but we don't we can't use taxpayer dollars other than to enhance what we currently have which i think would be really good for our county for our employees probably decrease our insurance um, overall for mental health and, and overall wellness so i think we have a great opportunity here and as as the chair knows we talked about um combining this with a facility that we need to put on the fairgrounds for our transportation department. And there's money that can be, that will need to be used for that facility that can be used to help to grow this situation. So we can save money and plan the two things together. So that would be the part of phase two that I would be very interested in seeing is what perhaps White could show us in terms of a drawing of what a front porch kind of enhancement of the of what we currently have would look like. So that would be um, my position on that. Thank you so much, Chair Conroy. Um, I couldn't agree more. We, we to echo what some of the other comments have made, I do believe that the, the fairgrounds are a crown jewel in for DuPage County and absolutely underutilized. So, and it's right in the county seat, you know, epicenter of our county. Um, so many things positive there and so many different intersections here, as, as um, Chair Conroy touched on. There's the intersection of economic development and the arts, the arts and public health, um, and growing and, and taking care of the facilities and the land that we already currently own. And so elevating that, I agree, can do nothing but um, positive net benefit for all. And so that's something that I do love about the fairgrounds is that they are, they're right here and they're everyone's everyone's property here. Um, but of course, we were tasked with, we had to ask uh, Duncan to look there first in order to address the need for a new storage facility for snow plows. So that's why that was given credence. But of course, he's going to be looking countywide. So just to make that really clear, none of that is set in stone. So that was just phase one. So we put this, um, what I'm gonna call it a self-imposed speed bump into this facility, into this study, where we said, let's get through the first phase. Then let's stop, let's all gather, present the first phase of the feasibility <laughs> study so we can say, all right, is there a there there? That's the term we keep using. And if so, then we continue. We wanted to do that to make sure that if, the, if it was a very clear and easy, you know what, no, we can't sustain this in DuPage County, we don't, we don't really like any of these options, that we were able to then stop the feasibility study and not spend any more money on it. 
The money has already been budgeted for and allocated. So far for the art study, we have spent 45,500. For the sports study, we've spent $3,953. We do not need any more funding for this study. That has already been taken care of. So now what I'm gonna ask for is a consensus. The only thing that we're doing with this consensus is saying, yep, please continue this study. We wanna know more. And the only action item that we would have to take in terms of a resolution for a vote on the full board is to say, we need to extend the date of this study. Cause obviously we set it to be coming up till now. So no budgetary decisions or votes need to happen. That's already taken care of. So this is really quite simple. We just wanted to make sure and bring it forth to everyone to say, what do y'all think? So what do y'all think? Yeah. Committee members, raise your hand to show a sign of consensus to continue this study to phase two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a consensus and we have a, a whole committee. So thank you so much, Duncan. It's wonderful work. Thank you, everyone. Um, Greg, would you like to introduce our next study? In the or do time, you I won't even stand. Brandon Dowling from C.H. Johnson and the Stewart. I'm ready. He <laughs> moves right. quick. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's shift gears here. Everyone get on their so helmet and grab a minute. I'll just jump right in. Brandon Dowling with Johnson Consulting. Uh, we're here locally, so we, we didn't have to travel, so that's a good thing. Uh, but we specialize in, in market financial feasibility studies for these types of facilities all throughout the U.S., so it would be kind of nice to have one in our backyard. Uh, and just jumping right in, a lot of this stuff you, you've sort of seen previously, too, so I'll, I'll try to focus on the stuff that's pertinent to here. Um, if you go on to the next slide, uh, next slide, please. So again, this is probably no news here to everyone, but it's, it's important to our analysis and understanding where you all are from a population, uh, household income, medium household income, the, the age, your spend. Uh, these are all things that we look at from a countywide perspective to really understand, understand the market and its ability to support these types of facilities. So the, again, this is in, in, in fact for the sports complex. If you go on to the next slide, we start, we start to dive a little bit deeper into what we call support infrastructure for these types of sports tourism complexes. Uh, and an important piece of that is, is hotels. Um, and so as you can see, the, the county is fairly robust in terms of hotels, uh, pretty healthy occupancy and, and ADR, right? So these are pretty strong indicators and in its ability to support this type of facility uh, throughout the county. Um, and the next slide, from here, we start to look at national trends. Um, one thing that's important to this is you, you'll see sort of all of them are, are sort of tailing down in terms of uh, all the way on the left is, is, is participation level. So, you know, it started off at 20 million plus and we're starting to crawl down a little bit. And a large part of that we attribute to the specialization of sports. So a lot of us, when we were younger, we played five different sports given the season. Now kids are baseball in their year round or soccer in their year round, volleyball year round. Uh, a lot of that has contributed to the development of these types of facilities because of the specializing of sports. Um, and you'll see that little yellow line that's drastically moving up. And I, I haven't gone a day talking about pickleball, so I got to make sure I get that in today. Uh, By the pickleball. way, those, those numbers are all Greg Bedeloff. <laughs> Amber Galassi. Amber Galassi. Oh, yeah, Amber yeah. Galassi. The two of them single handedly driving that yellow line. I don't know. I got a hand. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, and then, <laughs> and the next slide. Um, uh, in, in these next two slides, we, we focus in on the indoor and outdoor sports. So this is looking a year over year of participation and the, the growth in those. And so you can kind of see where volleyball, ba basketball, gymnastics, again, these are sort of your traditional indoor sports and looking at the year over year growth in the participation trends. And a lot of this comes from the SFIA data which is tracking purchase of, of sporting goods that kind of attributed to participation on a national level. Um, and, and the next slide is very similar for outdoor sports. So this is your baseball, softball, football, uh, lacrosse. Again, a lot of your primary sports still continuing to see growth from, from last year. This is just a quick snapshot to kind of show you when we talk about the large multi-purpose indoor facility and, and, and the various surfaces that can kind of overlay, right? You, you have basketball, volleyball, tennis, pickleball, wrestling. Again, this is just a, a limited in snapshot, but we wanted to show you sort of the context and the size and scale of these types of facilities. Um, and we'll get into sort of where we're recommending, but it'd be towards the, the, the latter part, that 70 to 100, uh, and given the size uh, of this facility in this market. 
Uh, next slide. Next slide. Okay, so when we talk about sports tourism, there's three different cashments, uh, 30 minute, 90 minute, and 240. So hour and a half and four hour. Uh, that 30 minute is what we call our primary target market. That, what we found on a national level, mom, dad, caretaker, don't really want to drive further than that for a weekday uh, practices and games. And so that's really your target market, right? That's your Monday through Thursday programming and demand. One of the things that's really stood out to us when you look at the sports spend within that 30 minute, you guys are 35% above the national index. So, you know, when you put that in the numbers, it's you know greater than $200 uh, annually in average spend for that. And then when you look at the, the, the again, hour and a half, you're 9% over the national average. It starts to tail off when you get a little bit further, obviously, um, from a regionality standpoint, but these are really strong numbers for us as we start to look at, is there spend and participation happening within those major cash ins? And just to sort of finish off on the, the 90 and the one up hour and a half and, and, and four hour, that hour and a half is sort of our, our target regional tournament market that we'll look at to. Uh, maybe likely not gonna be staying over, but that four hour they're staying over. So that's where we start to look at how many tournaments are we going to have where we're going to be creating room nights uh, and stay over and spend here? Um, as we began, we started to look at all the various markets. So this is just a little snapshot of, of all the various communities throughout the county that have either already studied or begun to study or, or under consideration. And so, um, you know, over the last several years, there's been a lot of interest in this type of facility uh, throughout the county. Um, and so, you know, another strong indicator of of local uh, demand, if you will, for this type of facility. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this, the one in Aurora here shortly. On the next slide. Um, so the next several slides is, uh, our next step is what we do is a, is a more of an inventory audit. So we're looking at all the various uh, indoor, outdoor, uh, and we say outdoor multi-purpose, and then there's outdoor diamonds. So that's soccer oriented, and then the other one's more baseball, softball oriented. And so this is a look at uh, your, your indoor, um, and again, within those same catchment areas to understand really what's out there today, what would we might be competing with, what the quality looks like. So a lot of this is we're doing a fairly deep dive into some of these facilities uh, to really understand what the competition looks like from a quality and size standpoint. And the next slide. Next slide. Um, so this is just to look at sort of the, the soccer. I don't know if we're going back to the other one. It, it, it's more of the. You went back. Yeah. Four or two to back on. There. Uh, one more ahead. Uh, <laughs> so, no, the other one. Four. There you go. Oh, nope. Nope. That's right. Yeah, start here. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's stop here and we'll go through this one. So this is. Uh, this is soccer. So this is outdoor multi-purpose. Uh, again, one of the things, and you'll see that big giant circle, that's uh, uh, the Stewart's mm -hmm. complex, obviously, uh, 20 plus fields, right? And so, again, when we start to look at what the opportunity and demand is, it's important to understand what you guys have currently, what the quality is, what it's doing. Um, and so we did the same for, for baseball as well. If you can go to that slide on the diamonds, and this is a look at that. So um, not as obviously robust, and, and, and this is where we think there may be a little bit more of an opportunity as well um, relative to the greater market when you start to look at a regionality standpoint on this. Um, one of the unique things to talk about on baseball, softball is um, it's not as regulated as soccer um, is, and so there's a lot of, you got to go through the organizations, the national governing bodies, and so, you know, baseball, anyone sort of can create their own sort of tournament, if you will, if there's enough demand and opportunity. So the flexibility of a baseball softball uh, really uh, elevates itself in terms of a, a demand driver relative to a, a soccer. Uh, next slide. So these are under construction or consideration or they're being studied. Um, you know, these are sort of, you know, we, we sort of get a lot of calls being in this industry here, especially, lo especially locally and regionally. So we, we basically threw out everything we've heard of, whether there's a just initial call, they're thinking about doing a study, they're under a study, they may be going forward with a uh, development, uh, just to understand sort of what that makeup looks like. Uh, the next slide. All right, so here's a, a list of some of our initial sites. Uh, I'll say initial because there's another one that's sort of come about too as well in, in Westmont. Um, and, and one of the things that we, we we had done is, is if you see all those blue dots, those are hotels. 
Uh, when we talked about hotel infrastructure being sort of paramount to the success of this, you start to see that so it's a heat map. So those those yellow are, are really a, a large cluster, you know, all those little dots, right? And so uh, the closer to that, the more ideal, uh, not necessarily needs to be on top of it. But again, when we start to look at this sort of independently, looking at where the hotel infrastructure is, um, um, it we're sort of able able to sort of uh, align with where the, the visitation of this facility could potentially be relative to that support infrastructure. Um, and again, going back to, we, we had a similar, uh, I'll use a roadblock or, or speed bump with the fairgrounds that we wanted to assess. And that was one of those things that we were able to assess kind of early that the fairgrounds doesn't necessarily lend itself to this type of facility. If you look at it on the map, you sort of see it, it's almost the donut hole of no hotels, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, when we talk about what we're looking to do here from the sports complex, it doesn't really lend itself to the fairgrounds, right? And so, uh, again, this is a really initial uh, review of the various sites that have come to, to about to date. Um, but again, it was, it was really helping us to kind of understand what's available out there. One of the things I'll just say overall is, uh, as many may know in this room, uh, availability of land is very scarce uh, in terms of especially size, right? And so a lot of that lend into our recommendations that we'll get into here in a second, if you can go into the next slide. Um, oh, we go to case studies, sorry. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. And now just this is a, this is a really cool uh, snapshot um, relative. So DuPage County is, is green. Uh, all the rest are some of, you know, I call the top four or five regional sports complexes. You see how well uh, DuPage County um, benchmarks against them. Um, the, the blue, that's similar size, that's the one in Hammond, Indiana. Um, but, you know, from a population density, from a medium household income, uh, far outpassing mm -hmm. a lot of these successful facilities already within the sports tourism. So again, just another interesting indicator that the success that uh, DuPage County could have in such a venue. Next slide. So I'll pause here and just kind of synthesize this. I know it's a lot of words, but um, ultimately our, our recommendation, it starts with the, the keys to success. We always, you know, we start everything with defining success in the study. Mm -hmm. And that was to increase economic impact and visitor spending uh, through sports tourism, right? And so, when we talk about that, we know automatically that this is to be a regional type of venue. And there's size limitations to that for both outdoor and indoor. When we talk about the, the regional opportunity and the draw for that. Um, however, when you start to talk about large, you know, outdoor regional, uh, that starts to be limited opportunity available to uh, a land available within DuPage County, right? So there's some limitations that we, we had to overcome early on. Um, but frankly, that's why we, we laid out two different scenarios. So scenario one, in our opinion, uh, and I guess maybe start globally, we think there's an absolute market here for both indoor as well as outdoor. Um, you know, when we look at all this participation, the, the infrastructure, the, the existing facilities, there could be both indoor. And when I say outdoor, I, I mean more of a baseball softball oriented. Uh, Stuart kind of has a lot of the soccer already taken care of. So I, we, we don't think there's any more need for anything like that. But um, indoor certainly gives you the more multi-purpose year round. So that's more of the needle mover, if you will, from an economic development, because it's, you know, we, we all live here, we know the weather. And so there's a limitation on an outdoor uh, uh, facility would have. Um, so we did these two different scenarios and really the driver behind these is we do know um, the city of Aurora was out to an RFQ for a 50 acre site for a, a sports facility of some sort. Um, it was a developer led response uh, that they're looking at an indoor, right? And so one of the things that we had put in our recommendations is, you know, we need to kind of understand a little bit better where they are in that process and what the response was to that. Um, obviously, we don't think there's enough room in the market to have duplicate like that, right? And so uh, that's, you know, scenario one is A, um, it, it looking at what the indoor could be from a multi-purpose, and then B is, uh, should that go forward, is, is that outdoor baseball, softball, um, and, and that would be done in a, in a fashion that we think there's a couple of different satellite facilities that could lend themselves to this. Um, there also may be uh, another site that's maybe large enough to consume all of them at one site, which would be more ideal, uh, but the satellite does work. The next slide, we'll go into a little bit deeper into each of these options. Um, and so again, here's some just throwing out some of the sites that we did look at from the indoor that would be supportive, obviously the Aurora. Um, you know, Lombard is that one to the right. If you look at um, one of the things that I didn't touch upon that I think is pretty important, those circles are about three and a half 
miles, um, basically trying to describe 15 minutes from the site. Uh, that's what we found on a national average. Anything more than a 15 minute drive to the hotel, you start to infringe on the user experience. And so, uh, you know, it was a great facility, but we had to drive 25 minutes to our hotel. Uh, and so you may get that first visit, but you may not get second, third. So well, that's an important indicator for us. And that's why we have several circles on. I, I was remiss in sharing that early on. But ultimately, you know, we're thinking the size of eight to 10, uh, probably lower on the side of 10 uh, uh, basketball courts, uh, multi-purpose, uh, you know, could serve as basketball, volleyball, again, gymnastics, cheer, you name it. Um, you know, there's some concession areas. We think there's some opportunity for like a sports orthopedic health care partner. There, there ought to be some sort of family entertainment component to this. And we're starting to see a lot of that. And that's starting to be a, an important indicator on a lot of these or, or success indicator uh, relative just to the, the, the development of these types of facilities. There's a, there's a lot of them out there right now. And so um, really diversing, uh, differentiating yourself is becoming more and more important. So having something for before, during, and after is important for these types of facilities. Uh, Bless you. Bless you. Um, the next slide is that, so this is the scenario B and it's an outdoor uh, baseball, softball. Um, it, you know, again, when we talk about regional, we want to get to at least that 16 diamonds. Um, and so we laid out three different sites. Again, these are the various sites that we talked to in it originally um, about some opportunity in, that, in developing these types of facilities. Um, you know, you'll see the drive times between them. Again, we didn't want to infringe on that 20 minute window that we talked about. So if we got to drive greater than 20 minutes to each of the, you know, call them ball fields uh, that are all part of one tournament, uh, it will start to impact uh, the user experience, right? And so again, one of these would be allocated to be a championship. So there'd be a championship field and that would be where opening and closing ceremonies are and things like that. And so, again, this is all very preliminary based on sort of the sites that we've talked about to date. But again, this is something that we think would be a viable option as well. So uh, much similar to the, the initial presentation, this is our early sort of due diligence. Our next phase would be more of that deeper dive and discussion with the various sites uh, and formulating the business plan. So, you know, how big is it gonna be? How much is it gonna cost? What are the rental rates? How many tournaments? You know, how many actual teams we think will come, and the economic impact and influence of that. I sorry, I felt like I just wrapped that, but <laughs> please, uh, I think that's pretty much the conclusion of it. Uh, we'll go to questions. Hey, um, Member Culver, I just have a comment. I, I um, thank you for that study. It was detailed. There was a lot of detail, and uh, so many people have come to me um, regarding diverse sports. I had people come to me saying. You know, we want a space for cricket, you know, and, and different sports. And um, there was a there are a couple of ideas that I have a uh, few places by my in my district. Um, I was looking at maybe a huge sports complex, you know, by Fox Valley Mall, but that didn't work out because there's a new development there of apartments. But yeah, we have potential and it drives in a lot of money. We have a lot of hotels and people come for these uh, sports games. So I've, I've just had so many people come to me for this. So thank you for presenting. Thank you. This is something we really wanted to look at because that's what we hear all the time. And any parent here of sporty kids, as I can attest, this is all we do is leave DuPage to go to tournaments. And um, we were trying to see if we could keep that here, not only keep DuPage residents here, but then draw people into DuPage for this. Yes, member Oop. Yes. Thank you, um, Chair. I really appreciated this um, presentation. I was a little surprised that you, there was more of a focus on the basketball, considering there was a change in outdoor sports participation trends, like you mentioned. In outdoor so soccer, it was 8.1%, and in indoor soccer, it was 7.5%. And I just happened to notice that because we are a soccer family, and we are going to St. Louis for a soccer tournament, then we're going to Minnesota for a soccer tournament, and we're going to Indiana for a soccer tournament. So lots of soccer tournaments outside of our yeah. line. Um, so I was just wondering um, what your opinion was on that. Yeah, no, I, I would I would say that, you know, what we have seen over time is they fluctuate, right? So, so that's just a year over year percent growth. When you start to look at it from a historical standpoint where you get more of a better context. But frankly, the reason why the indoor is it's just so more more like multi-purpose and it's year round, right? And so <laughs> we talk about the success of this. It was to be more of a regional draw year round to move the needle from a, you know economic development spending, staying in hotels and things like that. So there's more of an impact than a seasonal outdoor venue could potentially have, you know, you get nine months maybe if, if we're lucky, right? And so that's sort of the real reason behind it because there's a lot of different 
sports. You, you know, we didn't even talk about sort of trade shows, consumer shows, non-sporting events that could happen in off-peak times. So that's what always led us to the, the, the indoor and less requirement on the size of, of acreage, which was, you know, a challenge from the get-go as, as available land. Vice Chair Galassi. Yeah, and to, to Member Yu's point, I, we've, my kids are now, um, you know, in college, um, but the amount of time we've spent in cars driving other places, spending money other places, Indianapolis comes to mind because I have baseball players, and um, the Cedar Point location and even South Bend. And I, you know, I have friends who kids play volleyball. They were just gone last weekend in Louisville and St. Louis. And I, I just think um, from an economic development standpoint, the money that we're missing out on from the tourism um, bucket here in DuPage is gigantic because we can't offer, you know, tournaments like that. So I'd rather be the place, the destination where families are driving to instead of all of our families to, you know, driving to elsewhere. So I fully support this. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Member Rutledge. Yeah, I would say my kids were baseball and show choir. So we drove all over the place too. Um, but what kind of surprises me about your study is that there, how few venues there are in DuPage. I saw Lyle and Naperville, that was it. So from that aspect, I think that we are, um, <clears throat> I want to say missing out, but the, uh, missing the ball yeah since no, we're going to be a school that was, uh, more. Like that, yeah. and then i think people <laughs> can also probably can attest to this that when you do go to these things in in dupage county they're jam-packed yeah. jam jam-packed there's no parking your team is waiting in the corner to get on their court and i mean it is we are bursting at the seams of our existing sports facilities um, yes, Member Cahill. Um, yes, I too. My kids all did airborne basketball out of mm -hmm. Elmhurst. And we, I used to say put 100 miles a day on my car, driving mm -hmm. all the basketball games. But my question to you is about Bensonville, unincorporated, has a dome there, that indoor dome. Did you take a look at that? Because I toured it, and they seemed to think that there was a lot of downtime, that they couldn't get uh, clubs and sports teams in there. I don't know why that was. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've toured that. I've seen that facility. Um, I, I would I would say that what we're talking about is a much more different dynamic than than Bensonville uh, Dome. And not to, I mean, this yeah. would be more hard roof. Uh, you know, we've been to a lot of domes. They're not really conducive to regional and large scale tournaments, if you will. Okay. So that's more like local seasonal usage when you talk about okay. the dome. So Okay. Um, that's you know, not necessarily sort of an apples and apples, if you will. Well, they have the Edge Ice Arena there too, which right. is does a lot of uh, tournaments and uh, big things there. Yeah. yeah, and that brings a lot of money into Bensonville. I'll tell yeah. you, that. there's a lot of hockey around here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. this is big, big business. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yes. youth sports are big business. Member Gustin. Thank you very much for the report. I think it was very insightful. Um, I just wonder, did you throw in, or have you looked at? The different colleges and schools that have big fields and indoor basketball and all of that kind of stuff that really there there are some other um, facilities that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, we do and I'm, I'm aware of them, but we don't necessarily traditionally keep them in our analysis. And the reason why is because those are driven by student use first. Right. So they're not really conducive because when you want to host a tournament, you have to have that date couple of years in advance or right. a couple of months. And so and holding that from a college right. or university, they're not going to be able to give you that date, frankly. Right. So you don't want to sort of plan for that, that you have that available and then it doesn't, right? And so that's... Yeah. that's what and then doing. the soccer fields and stuff at the parks. I know she only had Frontier Park in Naperville, but a lot of our other parks have soccer fields. Stewart, yeah, Did yeah. you only go with... If they had multiple soccer we, yeah, I think uh, we did it like six and above, so we were eight okay, or above. So yeah, above. we were again so looking more to tournament quality that can host okay. larger. Very yeah. good. Um, and then, did you look at any properties that are for sale to repurpose? I'm going down the Bears Lane. I know it's not happening, but is there? Or did you look at anything that's on the market that isn't vacant that potentially could be repurposed? Yeah, the, the bears came up, um, we, you know, again, we were at a high level. We looked at some of these sites. Um, uh, I would say, you know, there's a, there's another opportunity in Westmont that, that's out there. Um, but I think, again, looking at this from a, a development standpoint, we're going to have to look at sort of what that really looks like. And that, that's sort of that next phase, right? And sort of 
how much it would cost, is that even viable, right? And so we kind of looked at just from a sizing standpoint, what those available sites would be. Thank you. Vice Chair Galassi, I, I just, I think, I mean, I just want to add a comment that I think when we're dealing with um, the mental health of our youth, the issues that we're having there, I think sports, I fully believe that sports can be a very positive impact on youth mental health. And with that, I also just want to say that having these facilities here in DuPage, I think would make some of these travel sports more um, inclusive to, to families that have a lower income level because they're not going to have to spend the money on hotels and, and travel. So I think for those two reasons, I think it's a very positive impact for DuPage to, to look at this. Thank you. Um, Greg, do you have anything that you would like to add? Uh, just a couple of clarifying comments, if I may, beginning with the arts end of it for member you particularly, the list of the interviewees is all maintained in the Choose DuPage database, and we're happy to share the individual names of the folks that the survey went out to, whether it was a phone call or whether it was an email survey, so that information is available. The, the resolution, and I'll be happy to get it to you, the resolution between Choose DuPage and the county was that a, an existing inventory of all product had to be made available. So additionally, these are condensed versions today, this presentation, although it doesn't seem like it, right? <laughs> and I'm not helping. Um, but all of the inventory of both performing arts and sports venues is also available in a Choose DuPage maintained database. I'm happy to share that with, uh, get it to staff or whomever, and it can be distributed to any county board members. I know particularly uh, Duncan's report showed a lot of those bubbles what does that bubble represent? There's an appendix that shows each and every one of those locations throughout the county. And then with regards to Brandon and the sports component, as the guy who does economic development for a living on your behalf here in DuPage, I just want to level set that um, the available dirt that we have is largely privately owned. And that privately owned dirt has a land value of X to a developer, typically driven by, in today's market, multifamily residential, single family residential, transportation distribution and logistics. And the price elasticity, as a parent who did all the things that you all talked about, the price elasticity of participating in those tournaments reaches a breaking point when you have to charge a multiplier because the land value is higher and the acquisition cost is higher. And that all just gets rolled into the cost of participating in the tournament. Not saying it can't be done. Just wanted to make sure that you all know that the value of the dirt here in DuPage is so high that mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why these things are very difficult to develop in DuPage. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for letting us do the study. Of We're course. happy to do whatever you want us to do with the next phases. Thank you. Member Krajewski. I just had one comment is move, if you move forward towards the next phase for this sports study, I know a lot of the uh, professional teams are getting around the country are getting involved in a lot of these complexes. And you know, I mentioned to you about the Houston Rockets owner who's got a $700 million private equity fund that's starting to get into them. You mentioned the 76ers owner who's getting into these sports facilities and partnerships. So if we move to the next phase, I was talking the other day to an uh, unrelated matter to Brooks Boyer, right close me up with Liz and Donner, he's the operations director for Chicago White Sox. And I was explaining to him about you know, this feasibility study. So he mentioned New Lenox. Uh, which I saw on your screen up there, the new Lennox for baseball. Um, but then he did also um, mention that Ryan Torp is looking at buying a professional volleyball team uh, to play at the United Center. But he said with that, you would probably see the travel volleyball kind of affiliation pop up. So moving to the next phase, kind of working in, kind of look how to fund it and how to do it, mm -hmm. this private public partnership, working with one of the professional teams, mm -hmm. whether it's basketball or baseball or case volleyball so we move to the next phase encouraged to reach out to you know, professional teams we have in Chicago about yeah you know, working with them for their travel programs and I think the White Sox even do some of the AA baseball where mm -hmm. they do the logos yeah um, so they're already involved in the travel sports because I know the 18 and 17 guys have Chicago White Sox stuff when they go down to Georgia or whatever so mm -hmm. um, just as we look at trying to how to fund these and pay for them the affiliations with the professional team yeah no, that's exactly right. And I, and you know, part of that next phase that was in risk is, is sort of that strategic partnership opportunities. And so reaching out to sports orthopedic or healthcare, the, the professional sports, and we talked about the schools. One thing we do see with the schools is they're, you know, they're limited in space. And so there could be a use for them during the day to be using this facility for their programming. And so 
that's all part of that next phase is having those discussions with them to understand if there's an opportunity for them to utilize what a future venue would be. That's right. Okay, so in the interest of time, let's talk about moving the <coughs> study forward or what our options are. So I do believe we don't have all the information that we want in terms of that study that uh, um, coming out of Aurora. Is that That's correct? correct? Yes. So um, Greg, I'm gonna turn to you to say, can we discuss this? Do we have the mm -hmm. information that we need at this time to call for a vote on? Well, I think status? the question that the committee has to ask themselves is, I think the recommendation that we heard was there's not enough land to do one big gigantic outdoor facility, but there is an opportunity to do multiple outdoor facilities. You could certainly advance that and look at that component of it. But the other recommendation was a, a larger indoor facility if the city of Aurora isn't advancing their indoor facility. Because if they are advancing their indoor facility, that kind of addresses the concern. And Brandon and I have talked about this. That addresses the gap in that market. So um, because we bifurcated both studies and we have the toll boots and the speed bumps that you alluded to, the money is, has been allocated, but it, it, it would seem to me that we should find out what Aurora is doing, give that a little bit of time, see what's happening in Aurora with regards to the indoor facility. And if it's the will of the committee, have uh, the Johnson Group focus any additional work that they do on just looking at these outdoor satellite facilities um, and just keeping their finger on the pulse of, of things. But I don't, personally, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to you know, spend the money to look at something that somebody may be doing already that's going to benefit DuPage. Um, I concur completely. And as chair, that would be my recommendation is that basically we say, can we press pause and wait till we get this information from well, Aurora? Press pause on the, in, on the, on the indoor, indoor component. But I think right. that if I heard the board right, I heard there was an appetite for soccer and looking at some of these satellite facilities with maybe one of them acting as the home run metaphor <laughs> facility. <laughs> I, yeah. really missed on these I do think everyone <laughs> everyone here understands the importance of the economic driving force of youth sports. So, so then, um, then let's see a show of hands if you agree to. We're going to wait on pause on the indoor facility till we get the information from Aurora, but that we would like to continue in exploring these smaller venue opportunities. One, two, three, four, five. We have consensus. Okay. Thank you so <coughs> Thank you much. All. Thank you. One moment, please. So what I would like to do, thank you so much and thank you for everyone's attention. And um, this was a whole lot of information, but we really appreciate you being here, participating and listening. Um, I think this is terrifically exciting. Um, I would really, really like to thank both of our consulting firms who come in, Duncan Webb and Johnson for coming in and pre your wonderful presentation. And uh, thank you specifically to Choose DuPage for implementing these studies and being a trusted community partner and working with us. This is a, um, a big day in economic development in DuPage County, people. Oh, All right, do we have any old business? Yeah, one new okay. business, sorry. Well, then that's not old business. Okay. So we do not have old business. Do we have any new business? New business, but it's really just a helpful note. Um, I don't know if you know, Aurora is obviously moving their casino, mm -hmm. but the mayor, I talked to him and they're actually looking to do a concert venue. So who's ever doing the concert stuff? <laughs> The musical stuff, you may want to know that Aurora is looking at doing something here. Okay, and thank you so much. Yes. Without okay. further ado, I motion to adjourn today's meeting. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.